All right, uh, so the purpose of this video is for you guys to really understand the content. Um, this is unit seven and eight pushed together. You guys did not get a test yet. So the idea here is I'm gonna give you the test that I gave my students last year and just call the practice test. Um, and then use this video to understand the ones that you got wrong before the real test, okay? All right. Let's get started. We are going to first look at, we have um, the coordinate plane here. And the real problem students have is not knowing that you go over first and, and up. So it says, which coordinate is plotted at six zero? So you want to go six over, zero up, that's going to be D, right? Six over, zero up is D. Which coordinate is plotted at four two? Four over two up, that's A. Which are, which are the coordinates for C? So here's C. Now, how far do you go over? None. And then you go straight up four. So it's zero, four, which is A, zero, four. This one says, which are the coordinates for B? B, well, look at B's right here. Five over four up. So five, four, which is A which simplifies to three. Okay, so what I normally do is I'll just start at one of them and then work my way through the problem. So we have 24 divided by six times two minus one plus four. The first thing in order of operation is anything in parentheses. Now you have 24 divided by 12 minus one plus four you always divide or multiply before adding or subtracting, and 24 divided by 12 is two, right? 24 divided by 12 is two. Now you have a new problem of two minus one plus four. Well, two minus one is one, and then one plus four is five. So is that simplified to three? No. Let's go over to this one. Now we have six times one in the middle. So 24 divided by six is four, right? Four times one is four. Four, and then four plus four is eight. So this one simplifies to eight. That won't work either. Uh, and then looking over here, the first thing you do is in parentheses, that turns into a five. And then we do 24 divided by six, which is four. And then four times two is eight. And eight minus five is three. So this one is three. So that's going to be our answer. And just to double check, 24 divided by six is four. Four times, well, two minus one is one plus four is five. So I'm sorry, I should have done this first. It doesn't change it, but two minus one is one plus four is five. So that turns into five there. And then six divided by four, or six, four, 24 divided by six is four, and four times five is 20. So that one doesn't work either. So that correct answer is C. Simplify this expression. Okay, so we got a whole lot going on here. Um, the first thing that I'm going to do is I will complete this part because it's in parentheses. So I'm going to rewrite it as 5 plus 100 times 5 divided by 10 minus 12. Why did I put 12? Because it's in parentheses. Now I have a new problem, uh, and we have a multiplication and we have division but multiplication comes first left to right, so I'm gonna complete that. Five plus 500 divided by 10 minus 12. Now, I have this one. 500 divided by 10. Ooh, dividing by 10 is the exact opposite of multiplying by 10. So it just pushes the decimal back. 500 divided by 10 is 50. So now I have five plus 50 minus 12, 50 plus five is 55, minus 12, 43. So that answer is C, 43. Which expression represents multiplying the difference of 12 and three by four? See how it says the difference? Difference is answer to a subtraction problem. So the first thing that I have to do is I have to find the difference. So the difference is subtracting 12 minus three. 
So this one has 12 minus three and it's in parentheses, so it makes us do it first and then multiplying it by four, B is the correct answer. This is sum and sum, and this is subtracting, but you'd multiply first. And we don't wanna multiply first, we wanna subtract first because we have to find the difference of 12 and three and multiply that by four. Which expression represents dividing six by N and then subtracting eight? Dividing six by N and then subtracting by eight. Divide six by N and then subtract eight. So six divided by N minus eight is the right answer. And I see that right here and they put parentheses you don't necessarily have to put parentheses because you would divide first anyways, but C works. What is the rule? Well, I'm seeing X turning into 20, four turning into 40, six turning into 60, eight turning into 80, 10 turning into 100. To me, it seems like the pattern is getting multiplied by 10. The X gets multiplied by 10 to turn into the Y. So X times 10 equals Y, B. Using this rule, what would y be if x was 20? Ooh, what's, what's, so is it the same rule? Yeah, it looks like it. So times 10, times 10, times 10, times 10, times 10. If x was 20, it would turn into 200, right? 20 times 10 is 200. So I'm gonna go with C. True or false, this shape is a polygon. Well, polygon just means three or more sided figure, right? With straight lines that is closed so therefore, yeah, that's perfect. That's a polygon, why not? True or false, this shape's a polygon. Ooh, we just said it has to have straight sides. Sorry, that's not true. There's no straight sides, there's no straight lines. This shape is an example of everything but what? Is it obtuse? Well, obtuse means it has one angle bigger than 90 degrees. And some of you guys still get kind of confused with what 90 degrees is. Let's see if I can show you. Um, 90 degrees. Let's see. 90 degrees is exactly that. How do I know that's 90 degrees? Well, I know that's 90 degrees because I could put a little tiny box in the bottom. Therefore, it's 90 degrees. And then obtuse is bigger than 90 degrees. This is smaller than 90 degrees. Uh, this is smaller than 90 degrees. This is smaller than 90 degrees. So therefore, there, it, it is an acute triangle. It's a triangle, it's acute, and it's equilateral because all the sides are equal. So the only one it's not is obtuse. This shape is an example of everything except for what? Is it a rectangle? Yeah, it has two opposite groups that are the same and it has four 90 degree angles to the square. Yeah, they're all equal sides with four 90 degree angles. Is it a trapezoid? Ooh, it's not a trapezoid because these are parallel and these are parallel. So it's a parallelogram. Remember trapezoids would mean one of these groups is not parallel. Eventually somewhere they'd run into each other. So C is not, it's not, it is a rhombus because all four sides are equal. Two and a half feet equals how many inches? Two and a half feet equals how many inches? So I'm gonna take my two and a half feet and I'm going to multiply it by 12. Why? Because every foot has 12 inches. So two times two plus one is five halves because when I multiply mixed numbers, it's gotta be turned into an improper fraction. Can I reduce first? Yeah, you can reduce first if you want to. You could turn this into a six and this turn into a one. If you don't know how to reduce, then just go five times 12 is 60. Two times one is two. That's improper. How many twos are in 60? 30. If you do know how to reduce, then you would have turned this into a six, this into a one, and six times five is 30. Either way, you know the answer is 30. 85 kilometers equals how many meters? Oh, I gotta call King Henry. K H D by drinking chocolate milk. And it looks like we're using meters. So I'm gonna put an M here and I'm gonna put an M here. So I know that's millimeters and not just meters. 
And remember, everything has an M. What the hectometer? We're going from KM to M. So I'm going from here to here. One, two, three. I'm going three right. So I had 85. It has an invisible decimal here. Move the decimal three right, it turns into 85,000. Oh, we got a line plot here. Let's see here. Um, how many different friends did Joe give apples to? Ooh, each X is an apple shared with a friend. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm counting nine different apples. C is nine. Here it says, how much did he pour total? So what I like to do here is I like to take it one group at a time because we know those groups have the same denominators, so they're easy to add. So the first group is one and two fourths. Do you know what one, two and four, one and two fourths is? It's one and a half. So if you simplify it first, it'll be easier, but if you don't, that's fine. Two four six, so we have six fourths. Six fourths is equal to four fourths and two fourths. Four fourths and two fourths is, well, four fourths is one whole, and two fourths is a half. So that turns into four and a half. So right here, I'm going to write four and a half. And then down here, I'm gonna say two plus two plus two is six. So I'm gonna go plus six. And then this one is two and one fourth and two and one fourth. Well, we have two and a fourth, two and a fourth, two fourths, which is also a half, and we have four. So this is four and a half again. And then we have one more, which is two and a half, right? Because it's two and two fourths and there's one apple. Now I just have to add all those together and I'm good. We have four and a half, six, four and a half, two and a half. Half plus a half is a whole, and there's still one half left over, or you could say three halves, and then three halves, you know, two halves goes down, one half's left over. Six plus four is 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. 17 and a half is my final answer, and 17 and a half is right here. We're gonna find the entire volume. So the first thing you wanna do is find the, the base. Six times three would be the base, which is 18. So the area of the base is 18 and 18 goes up and down four. 32, four, five, six, seven. So that's 72 cubic centimeters, which is A. And then what about here? Well, here you are going to go and say four times four is 16, right? So it's four by four that finds the area of the bottom. And then 16 goes up and down eight. One twenty eight, which is D. So we just have a few problems left here. First, let's find the volume of the top and then we'll find the volume of the bottom and we'll add them together. So the volume of the top is three by two, four, which is 12 and 12 times two. So top is uh, 12 times two, which is 24. And then the bottom is nine by eight, which is 72, right? 
9 times 8, which is 72, and 72 goes up and down 4. So the bottom, 72 times 4. Let me make sure that's right. 9 times 9, yeah, 9 times 8 is 72, times 4. Oops, this would be, oh no, that is right. They're both volumes. Um, and then, all right, so now we got to add 8 plus 4, 8 plus 2, plus 1, 3, 1, 2, right here. It's 312 cubic yards, and all cubic yards means it's a three-dimensional yard. And then we have another problem here. It might be helpful if I actually draw a line to help us separate this into two normal figures. It would probably help if I didn't use the same color as the actual figure, too. Let me try this again. There. All right. Now we got to come up with some nice numbers. Well, this is 5 by 7 by 7. So we have, we have all the numbers that we need for the bottom one because it's the length. Oh, yeah, no. Okay. <clears throat> so we have seven by seven, which would give us the area of the bottom, and that goes up and down five. And then over here, we have five, but we don't know what this is, and we don't know what this is. So we got to be detectives here and figure it out. If this goes up to five here and the whole thing's eight, this must be three, right? The whole thing's eight. And this part's five, we need the rest of it, which would be five plus three, which is eight. And then we need to know this, which is the same as this, which is the same as this, which is the same as this, which is seven. Now we have all the numbers that we need. So first let's start, let's find the top. The top is seven by five by three. So 15, times seven, 35, seven, eight, nine, 10. So the top is 105. The bottom is seven by seven by five. And remember when you multiply numbers, like three numbers, you can do them in any order. Five plus five is ten. So this is the bottom. So this is the bottom. This is the top. Let's add them together. Five plus five is ten. Four plus zero plus one is five, and then two plus one is three. So that whole thing is three fifty, which again is D. Here it says, "What is the area of a rectangle that has a width of two and a half and a length of two and a third? Um, uh, so the area is length times width. So we have our length, we have our width, let's multiply them together. Two and a half times two and a third. Remember, you multiply mixed numbers by turning them into improper fractions. Two and a half is the same thing. Well, remember, two wholes is like two halves and two halves and then one half. So it's the same thing as five halves. And the formula we use is Multiply, add, keep the name the same. Multiply, add, keep the name the same. Why do we do that? Because the way you multiply fractions is you multiply the denominators, you multiply the numerators, and that's how you get your answer. Can we reduce here? No, that's true. There's nowhere to reduce first. Five times seven is 35. And three times two is six. It takes six, six, to make a whole. So how many sixes are in here? Well, we have six, we have 12, we have 18, we have 24, we have 30, we have 36, too many. So I'm gonna go with five, which was 30. And that if we took away 30, that means there's still five, six left. So I'm seeing five and five, six, which is A. 
And then our final question, ladies and gentlemen, we did it. Our final question is, what is the area of a rectangle that has a width of a half and a length of a third? Remember, length times width equals area. So it's half times a third. And the way we multiply fractions, just multiply across. So as always, if you actually watch this video, which if you're watching me right now, you watch the video, you get it right in in and you are doing everything that you can um, to make online learning work and it will pay off for you um, now if you watched me go through all those questions and you still might have a question for me please let me know and i will try my best to do a better job of explaining it to you before the test all right i will see you soon